teapot. Hello and welcome to today's video. We have a pretty intense session ahead of us. So, there's no other way to start a mountain bike mod video. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing great. I hope you have had a great weekend and a great week. Thanks for tuning in to watch today's mod video. I know we have many, many tea debates on here, but I've switched from Tetley to PG Tips because the tea bags are biodegradable. I was educated in my own comments. So, there you have it. I'm on the PG tip type. Okay, today we have loads to go through. I'm gonna give you a brief rundown. We've got full set of bearings for the e-bike. We've got a surprise, surprise to use. Me and Infinity Cycles have been through hell and back to get my e-bike frame sorted out. We've got new e-bike tubes. We've got new e-bike forks, three ride machines. We've got two surprise packages for the e-machine. Today's gonna to be quite the mods day. I am very, very excited. So, we're gonna get straight into it. But before we get straight into it, on owner, we've put the shorts in the same deal as all the hoodies, jackets, jumpers, and joggers. So if you add yourself a free t-shirt or jersey to your shorts order, you get a free t-shirt or a free jersey with every pair of shorts. Go and check that deal out, link is in the description. Thanks for the support, let's get into the mods. As you'll know last week, I was about to talk about new bearings then. I've got loads of new bearings for the Spech e-bike. But, before we get into the bearings, we'll probably be anticipating what in the hell is going on with the rear end of my e-bike. In the last video, I made a right mess of my seat stay. I basically knocked the little metal ring out, the inside of this seat stay, which means it was about to get super sketchy. A friend recommended that I got in touch with Infinity Cycles up in Durham. They're a sick specialized dealer. Literally, rapid, two days they got me from the dealer, two new seat stay tubes, which I unboxed yesterday on my story. You may have seen this. Basically, to cut a really long story short, I destroyed the back end of my e-bike getting the bearings out because I didn't know, I didn't quite have the knowledge to do the bearings. Basically, I just thought that I could smash them out one way, but it destroyed the back of the frame. Now, it was £60 for a seat stay tube and I got the last two in the country, which is pretty crazy. Basically, this one is the one that was destroyed as you can see, it's all fresh, brand new. They've even removed the bearings for me so that we don't have that slight little hiccup. I can only say thanks to Luke and all the other guys over at Infinity Cycles. Thank you so much for sorting it out rapid. Whilst I was at it, I decided to get the other seat stay. And the reason why is number one, I wanted them both to be new if one's gonna be new. Number two, it was the last two in the country and the bike's not getting any newer. There is a new specialized Kinevo out now on the market. So I decided it would be smart to get these two and replace them now for the simple fact that even though I only destroyed one of them, I was still pushing sockets into it. So it might be loose now. So long story short, the e-bike lives to see another day, even with my mistakes. Joined by its companions, we have a fresh frame, finally ready for powder coat. So, I think what I'm gonna do, which is a lot of people's recommendations in the last video, I'm going to get loads of screws and fit a screw in every single thread on the frame. Powder coat it, take them all out and put the original screws in. So, kinda like throw away screws. I'm gonna put screws in everything, take it there, tape all the insides of the bearings up. Don't worry, it's gonna be sick. You'll see, it's happening. I hope I can have it back midweek this week. I'll find out. So, basically, just while I'm at it, Infinity Cycles, give me an air freshener. And a bunch of stickers. Infinity Cycles. Infinity Cycles. I kind of do my own thing a lot on the channel these days, but when a shout out's due, a shout out's due. Shout out Luke for hooking it up. That was proper sick, my bike's fixed. I've got my e-bike back in action. Amazing, thanks guys. Okay, what's pretty cool is, when they took my bearings out for me, they came back in pristine condition. As you can see, that's what they should look like when someone takes them out. But they hooked it up with the rear bearings as well when they took them out for me. 
and just having a you know quick top up. Okay, so basically, new specialised e-bike bearings. Now, I went online and I bought a full set of bearings for the e-bike. And the reason why is, number one, the bike's not getting any newer. There's a new specialised Kinevo out, I've already said this in today's video. But it's going to become harder and harder and harder to get parts. But for me, I absolutely love my Kinevo. I don't care about any new bikes. I want to pimp my Kinevo up. I absolutely love it. Hence the new forks and the new the new toys on the floor for the new e-machine. It's going to be a build. Basically, I decided to buy a set of bearings. Whilst I was online, I thought, you know what? I'm going to buy two sets of bearings so that in six months' time, 12 months' time, I can change the colour again on the e-machine and not be too bothered. So basically, in the future, I can just smash bearings back out, put new ones in again. So I bought them while I was at it. So not really any need to buy two sets of bearings, but I can't afford while I'm getting them, while I've got the contact there, just get them, so it's done. I've got bearings. Now, this next box, this is a crucial part of the build. Crucial part of the build. So I'm going to show you what I bought for the workshop. The garage needs tools, always. Look at that. I don't know if it's going to fit. I think it's going to fit. I found it surprisingly hard really to find out if it's the right one or not so for those of you who don't know on an e-bike I'm going to show you now really quickly on an e-bike on the motor it's always stuff to move are we going to catch the fact that I've got brand new free ride forks for the e-bike? For now, yeah, okay, ignore them. On an e-bike, basically, when this is on your bike, your sprocket and your crank arms, they sit on the motor, so the axle's kind of built into the motor, as you can see on both sides, by the way. I am, t oh my God, I've just realized I've got something else. We're going to pick this back up in a second. I've got someone to show you, which was a recommendation in my comments on the last video. Stay there. In a second, I'm going to show you what this tool is, basically. I didn't have this tool when I was building the bike, and I had to use some stupid plier things instead. But, basically, loads of people were telling me the state of my motor, all my plugs and my wiring, let me find a piece. As an example, this is the main power cable. This is the main power cable that powers the e-bike motor from the battery. So that's where it connects to the battery, that's where it connects to the motor. Look at the state of that. I got the e-bike over a year and a half ago, or about a year and a half ago. I think I got it in August 2019. Anyway, roughly a year and a half, and every three to six months you're supposed to take your motor out, strip everything down, clean everything, put it all back together. Now, loads of people recommended that I got WD-40 Specialist Fast Drying Contact Cleaner for all my electronics and my cables. So I'm going to be using this to clean with these little brushes, one of these little brushes on this. Basically, I got these. I thought these would be pretty cool for my car on the interior, and then I can use one of them in the future for all my electronic plugs on my e-bike with Fast Drying Contact Cleaner. So rest assured, this e-bike build is going to be legit. Now, this tool... Moving back to the tool, is basically, this thing was called a castle nut. And basically this thing is what holds your sprocket on and your motor on from one side. And your sprocket, your crank arm comes off, then you met with this bad boy before you take your sprocket off. So yeah, it holds the sprocket on. That is actually what it does. I was trying to figure it out as I was talking, but it is what it does, basically. I didn't have the tool to do this, so I used another tool, which was quite rough. And I ordered the tool so in the future I can strip me e-bike down on multiple occasions quite easily. So, I'm going to put the dirty motor back on the floor until we hit this thing in a few days. Now, will the tool fit like a glove? Look at that. I found it pretty hard to find the information on whether this was the right tool for the job. But, it seems to be the right tool for the job. A little socket for a castle nut. 
my ever growing mountain bike tool collection is growing. I'm going to leave this safely planted inside its socket. So, we are getting somewhere with today's video. I've looked at these, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was going to unbox them for today's video, but as you can see, I couldn't withhold myself. I've had them for about three days. I, I literally had to look at them. I've not unwrapped them. I've not held them. I've just... Basically. I've probably wanted Fox 38 foot. We'll move on to the forks in a minute. We're not ready for the forks yet. The forks are the pinnacle of today's video. I nearly forgot. Okay. So, let's get rid of all the cardboard that we don't need. Basically, there is logic in what I'm doing right now. I actually wasn't getting these, but these is my, this is my ODI current growing section. And we need to figure out what colour the e-bike is going. Because we've got loads of grip colour options from ODI. Shout out ODI grips. Loads of grips in there. We just need to figure out what colour. We've also got grips in this one as well. This one's full of grips. So we've got loads of grip options for the e-machine. The big question is... When will the powder coat be finished? I swear to God it's getting dropped off on Monday. I hope I get it back before Christmas Eve. I've had wheels back that quick before. Maybe I'll get frame. But you don't want someone to rush the frame because you've got to put the bolts in nice and tape it all and stuff. But let's see. I'm not the powder coat after all. Okay. Now... These are the new e-bike brakes. These are brakes that I've had for about two years. They're absolutely faultless, there's nothing wrong with them, and I absolutely love TRP G-Spec brakes. They're unreal, I absolutely love them. Basically, I'm gonna be putting these on the e-machine. So, these are taking a trip over here to the e-bike desk. Right, now, this brings me on to the next two packages that I've got for the e-bike. It's a pretty big job, you know, doing a full bike renovation and all these bikes as projects. But I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Now, the front brake is intact. I'm ready to go. I'll probably put some new pads in just because it's been lying around. Why not? So, front brake, ready to go. Now, when I last... When I last took this brake off, I think it was on my Nomad. I could be wrong. Basically, I had to cut it because it was internally rooted. So, I needed a new cable for the TRP G-Spec brakes. So I've ordered a Shimano cable. It's an absolute headache to get a banjo hose kit. So this is called a banjo on a mountain bike, which is the little silver section where it joins the caliper. And basically, it was an absolute headache to get a G-Spec TRP banjo hose kit, which is this black hose that goes to the lever. Basically, quite a lot of people on forums, quite a lot of people have been saying that the BH90 Shimano should fit. So I've even seen pictures of them installed. I'm just gonna try it. It is a bit risky, but the very worst case is, is I'll have to get a cable from somewhere else or something, but I think it's gonna fit. So, as you can see, banjo on the back there, ready for installation when we come to finally doing the TRP brakes. This is the problem with mountain biking. In BMX, you can just use a 6mm Allen key and a 5mm Allen key. But in mountain biking, you have to put the work in to get your build right. It's unreal. Sick. Brake, ready to go. There we go. Now... You may be wondering. Now you may be wondering, what in the Lord is he putting gloves on for? 
because I've been absolutely rollicked before for not wearing gloves for this. So here we have new e-machine discs. They're beast. I actually didn't know they were packaged, which means, I mean, I was they were always going to be packaged, but you just never know, do you? I'd rather not risk it when I've paid good money for them. We have TRP brakes, 203 mil rotors, thickness 2.3 mil. These are beasts. These are, I think these brakes on the TRP G specs on the machine are gonna be unreal. The best, the best ever. The best, the sickest. The E machine is ready. We got TRP discs. So good. So good. Also, something to think about, it just reminded me when I've seen these little bolts that you get with the disc. It's just reminded me that you are actually. I have got some colour options. Depending on what colour we paint the e machine, we've got different colour options. We've got red for the discs, we've got green, we've got gold, and that's it. But we've got two sets of each khaki green, gold, khaki green, green. Khaki green and gold would be sick. Who knows? So, the e machine build is one step closer. I'm very prepared this time. I've got my discs, my brakes, my forks. Forks. It's overwhelming. The whole project has been astronomical. I've been waiting since the day these forks come out for an excuse to use a set of these. You have no idea how excited I am. I've never bought new forks before. Anyway, the point is, I've been wanting these forks since the day they came out and I've withheld and withheld and withheld from buying them. And I've wanted some for the e-bike for so, so long. Today was the day I did it. I bought myself a set of Fox 38 Kashima 180 mil travel, 44 mil rake, 110 boost forks. Let's get these unboxed right now. These are my existing e machine forks. These are Rock Shocks. So basically, 180 mil travel, Rock Shock Lyric forks. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these forks. They're unreal, they're amazing. These are going to be for a future build that you don't know about on the channel yet. So, I know a lot of you are probably going to comment saying, can you have me old forks? Can you get hold of these old forks? Basically, there's nothing wrong with them. Absolutely love them. I just wanted to really pimp the e-bike up for the channel. So, I'm keeping hold of these for another existing project that we're going to start in 2021. The Fox 38 rides, super stiff, super strong, super bulky. And one thing I do have a miniature nightmare over all the time when I'm riding, some of the speeds you hit on like free ride lines. If your fork's broken half, you really would probably die. Like you'd probably actually die. So, for me, a good strong set of forks is something that I've wanted to spend some money on for quite a while. Now, I didn't get the 38 e-bike forks. And the reason why is because these... Right, basically, loads of e-bikes come with 36s on. And these are stronger than 36s. They're bulkier, they're stiffer, they're machines. So I don't think there's a need for the e-bike forks for me. Obviously, if you're into them and you've got them, I'm really happy for you. I'm not trying to disregard them or disrespect the e-bike versions of these. But for me, I would rather be able to move these between my e-bike, maybe next year a different build, maybe a different bike and so on. So I decided to go for the set that'll go on the most of my bikes, including the e-bike. So that's why I didn't go for the e-bike 38, even though they're going on an e-bike because they're totally strong enough, they're totally amazing, and I can use them on different bikes, so it's pretty sick. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at the length of the steer tube. So sick. Look at that. 
unreal. Absolutely unreal. I've wanted to buy a set of these for so long. They're just so expensive forks for mountain bikes. Like Kashima brand new Fox forks are insane price. Like it's crazy. These were £1,300. It's ridiculous. But it's worth it. They make every bit of the trail feel unreal. So, we've got volume spaces, we've got a little booklet, and we've got a Fox sticker. In classic fashion, I'm, I'm basically sticking on my whole garage doors at the back. This is the fun part. We're going to actually unbox these forks right now. Nothing in there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. They're quite light, you know, for what they are. So these are a stiffer, bulkier version of a 36. But they're not as chunky as triple clamps, which are, or dual clamps, which are dual crown, I think they call them which are Fox 40s, which you'd have on a downhill bike. They're kind of like a trail version of a downhill fork. So insane. 180 mil travel. Big, massive stroke on that. Look at that. 38, 27.5, 27.5 plus, which is good because I'm running plus size wheels on the e-machine, which is pretty sick. My God, they are a good set of forks. We should have high and low speed rebound. High speed rebound, low speed rebound, which is unreal. Basically means you've got both high and low speed on the rebound. The actually pretty sick little pinch bolt as well on the quick release, as you can see there. The axle. What an incredible fork. This, this is going to be the craziest build ever, ever, ever. TRPG spec, discs and brakes. They're my favourite discs and brakes, the TRPs, absolutely love them. Then we've got Fox 38 forks going on this thing in Kashima. They are unreal. I want to put my wheel in, but I don't want to put my wheel in. Because if I put my wheel in, it means that they're used before they got... I'm going to put my wheel in. Right now, I'm going to put my plus size wheel in. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh my god. Plus size. E bike. Box 38. That is just extreme. This is going to be the sickest building ever done on the channel. Definitely the best. The best ever. This is going to be crazy. So sick.
what what a bike this is gonna be basically I have two questions I've never bought a brand new set of forks before ever this is all new to me so correct me if you think I'm wrong or help me if you think you can help me number one I don't think I got a crown race with it so I'm guessing the crown race comes with the headset on a bike I don't have a crown race on the bottom of the steerer on my forks will the one off my RockShox forks go on this or do I need to buy a new one please let me know in the comments below about that the second question is is there an ideal length to cut the steer tube to I also don't know that I know that you can put it on your bike put your stem on mark it round and then cut it in one of these things which I got off my lovely fiance she's buying me loads of bits all the time but what I don't know is I want these to go on other bikes as well as my e-bikes so is the generic length that's good to cut it to and then run spaces please let me know in the comments that would be super super helpful um, I don't know if there's any other stuff I wanted to ask whilst I've got your attention on the forks but I think that's it for now <sighs> they're so good these are pretty cool as well I think this is to let some pressure out the back after you have a bit of a crazy one and then little caps that go over them that is one good looking fork I think the whole video is just going to be me looking at a pair of forks going oh my god they're amazing but like I've never bought a brand new set of fox forks it's a first time it's amazing and they're like the best forks ever that you could buy like I love fox 40s but for me 40s are too restrictive I love trail bikes I, I do want to build a downhill bike when the world returns to normal I do want to build a savage downhill bike and um, with like triple clamps on it and stuff but for now I'm just embracing the trail riding because that's what's the easiest at the moment this bike is going to be absolute fire in the booth that's what I can say it's going to be ridiculous um, I guess the final question for today's video before we end this video and get out of here it's been a bit of an update on the e-bike build but I think if you're anywhere near as excited as me you're very excited what colour are we going to paint this thing? I've got a million ideas. I get a million comments every time I'm asking about it. I'm thinking khaki green. That's like Nardo, but green. It's like a gloss khaki green. I'm also toying with the idea of something like SVR Range Rover Blue. And a lot of people have also said do it some sort of purple slash pink. I quite like a cream as well. I reckon that would be a quite nice colour. Like a cream colour. Like somewhere between grey and cream, but that's kind of Nardo. I might do it Nardo as well. Have all my bikes Nardo. But I think that's going to be all for today's video. I think that's going to be the end. I'm very excited. I'm going to get this off to the party coaters. We're going to get this thing painted. I'm hoping sometime around Christmas we can put this thing together. I'm more excited than you would ever believe to build this bike. You have no idea. I've missed me e bike so much. It's driving me insane that it's in bits. I'm going to do the sickest build video. Make sure you tune in to check it out. Make sure you drop me colour suggestions. Make sure you let me know if you've got any information on steer tube lengths, bottom races on the forks. And make sure you go and check out the new shorts on Owner. You get a free t-shirt or a free jersey with every single hoodie, jacket, joggers, shorts or jumpers on the store. Go and check that out. Link is in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great week. Have a great Christmas if I don't see you before. And have a great New Year's. But I'm sure you'll see me by then. I'll be itching to put something online. Thanks for all the support. And yeah, we're going back to the office. Smash through the owner orders. Peace out.